Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. This is from the Money Magazine website. Ladies, uh, have your boyfriend or husband uh, pick up a copy of Money and read it to you. I know uh, you would never do it on your own unless you're over 50. So uh, have your boyfriend or husband uh, read your copy of Money. I do subscribe to it. Never and by the way, I've been a subscriber for years, and, and all the women I've been with, not one has ever picked up a copy and thumbed through the pages, ever. Making money is for a man to do. Men make the money. Women spend it. If somebody were really smart, instead of trying to get women to read Money Magazine, they'd have a magazine about spending money. Maybe that should be the name of the magazine, Spending Money. On the cover, you could have a chick with a Louis Vuitton $1,500 purse, some Fendi platform shoes, maybe a little Dolce Gabbana wallet, you know, some John Paul Gaultier glasses. Or uh, entering a mall. You know, if you had a magazine like that, it would sell like hotcakes. But all these, you know, the Wall Street Journal tries putting pretty pastel colors in it to get uh, the ladies to look at it. Come on. Women don't want to know about how to make or save money. They want to know how to spend it. Women spend 70% of the money in America. That's why TV is aimed at them and scared to death about offending them. Because women spend so much. But uh, women have no interest in saving or investing. Now, are there exceptions to the rule? Of course. So if you're an exception, please don't call in. Generally speaking, women under the age of 45 have no interest in learning how to save or invest money. They only want to know how to spend it if they don't already know how to spend it. So I think all of these publishers who are trying to get women to read their... Remember I told you there was a money magazine for women? And I swear to you, the stories were in larger type, and they were like pretty pastel colors. Every page looked like the uh, instruction manual out of a, a box of Tampax Pearl. Or OB Tampon. You know, all those, like, you know, purple and pink colors in it and everything. Yeah, it was great. That was a big success. Instead of trying to get women to read magazines about how to make money, they ought to publish a magazine about how to spend it. Things you could spend money on. How to get your husband to give you more money. How to date men with money. I'm amazed no one's ever come up with a magazine like this. It's so politically incorrect, they're afraid to do it. You know what? I should do it. I should become a publisher of a magazine. Call it Spending Money. And every month I have a picture of some gold-digging bitch on it. How to get a guy to give you his frequent flyer miles. I can think of a million articles you can put in a magazine like that. How to hire the best divorce lawyer and cut his nuts off. If he can't get it done on the sack, how to feel better about it by looking around the room and seeing all the great stuff he's bought you. I mean, there's a million articles you could have in that uh, that magazine. Cash for your cooch. Your co turn your cooch into cash. As we always say, it's not an accident that God uh, designed the vagina to look like a wallet. <laughs> Fillet your way to the top would be good, absolutely. I mean, there's, a, there's a million articles. Somebody's missing the boat by not publishing a magazine like this. I mean, you ever talk to a chick about balancing her checkbook? You ever see women, first of all, when they're at the supermarket writing checks? Which, by the way, anybody who's still writing checks at the supermarket now? Is a maroon. You gotta be kidding me. Debit cards, credit cards, come on, they take them all. Stop with the goddamn checks. But it's usually some attention whore who wants to take 20 minutes to take the checkbook out of the bottom of her pocketbook, rummaging through all the Kleenex and the Tampax and everything that's down at the bottom there, all the Altoids or whatever's down there, 
Take out the checkbook. Look for a pen. The first pen never writes. Do you have a pen? Can I borrow a pen? Then stand there and copiously write every piece of information into the register. And then after she writes the check number, the date, pay to the order of, all that information into the register, never bothers to subtract the amount from the total balance. So the same woman who writes all this information, takes them all the time to the supermarket, never has a balanced checkbook. Never. Unless she has a boyfriend or husband who handles it for her. It's just the way it is. Women don't want to know about saving. They don't want to know about investing. They want to know about any of that stuff. You know, here's a woman's, you know, a man's idea of saving money is taking 20% of your paycheck every week and stowing it away. Uh, maybe in a money market account, maybe in a mutual fund, maybe a bond fund, something like that. For a woman, saving money is seeing the window of Hugo Boss where it says 60% off. I'm, I'm, when I see a sign that says 60% off, I say 60% off what? By the way, I can save 100% by not going in there. That's how I save money. Women have a whole different view of this. No doubt about it. And that brings me back to Money Magazine, which has a website. And um, they try to get women to uh, read Money Magazine. They, they never succeed, of course. But they try to get women to read Money Magazine by putting articles about, like, marriage and money, or your relationship and money, or sex and money, or things like that. As a man, I only want to know how to make money. I don't want to, uh, uh, I, you know, the, the stuff that broads care about, stop putting it in the Wall Street Journal and Money Magazine and places where, where, where people are serious about learning how to, how to make money. What stocks are going to go up? What sectors of the market are going up? When interest rates might start going up, might start affecting the stock market? That's the stuff I want. I don't want to be reading about uh, couples and their arguments in Money Magazine. But here's an article from Money Magazine. It's actually from their website. I don't know if it actually made it to the magazine. Sometimes they put things on the website and they don't make it to the magazine. But uh, this one's called Mixing Marriage and Money. And it goes like this. With the allure of the diamond ring, the saying of I do, and the honeymoon, it's easy for altar-bound couples to ignore the fact that they are joining together two financial lives. If you and your partner don't take time to address the issue, money and relationship problems can arise down the road. That's why discussing your financial goals and mishaps, while not romantic, is necessary. For help getting started, here are today's five tips. Not four, not six. Five. Number one. No secret. Many couples can talk about religion, sex, and what they're going to name their kids, but often they're far less open about money, which is frequently cited as a reason for divorce. In fact, according to a recent Smart Money Red Book survey of married or cohabiting couples, 36% of men and 40% of women admitted they had lied to their spouse about what something they bought had cost. <laughs> Many couples get married and don't understand each other's spending and saving styles. Someone may feel comfortable incurring a lot of credit card debt. The other partner may freak if they have to pay interest. It leads to fights. It leads to arguments. So they need to talk about the saving and spending style, said Diane Forden, editor-in-chief of Bridal Guide magazine. Failure to talk about your finances and your money styles is also a failure to plan and to plan effectively. And that's one of the biggest reasons why couples can get into financial trouble. You should disclose as much as you can to each other, including your salary, debt load, student loans, inheritance, savings, and credit status. Start by having small conversations, not just one big one. Do it on your leisure time. Don't try to fit it in on the way to work or when you both come home and are exhausted. Yeah, you know, when you're having that nice romantic weekend, yeah, tell her that you want to know how much debt she has. Make sure she has supporting documentation. Tip number two, to combine or not to combine. The Smart Money Red Book survey found 64% of respondents maintain joint bank accounts. 
accounts, with just 14% keeping everything in separate accounts and another 18% using both. Figure out as a couple what your joint expenses are as well as how you want to save and how you want to spend your money. If you are a younger couple without a lot of assets, a joint account can work well. This lets you build together from the ground up. By the way, I don't agree with that at all. If you don't have assets today and you're a man, odds are you'll have more assets down the road. In fact, you'll make more than she does. Why do you want her to get half of everything you make? Why? Why? Especially since most American women will start saying things to you like, you've got two hands, do it yourself, or you've got a right hand, what do you need me for, and things like that. Why would you want to, in turn, give her half of everything you make as the years go by? Even if you've got zero today, are you that much of a loser to believe you will always have zero for the rest of your life in the greatest country on earth where anybody can make any amount of money they want to if they're willing to work hard and take risks? Do you really believe you're that much of a loser? Think hard. Are you that much of a loser that the amount of money you make today will be the amount of money you're making five years from now? Or the amount of savings you have today will be the amount you have five or ten years from now? If you believe that, you're a loser. Loser. Jeff Updike, author of a book called Love and Money, calls what we just described there financial intimacy. Ugh. Well, if you're an older couple or going into a second marriage, separate accounts may make sense. You both may already have successful careers and financial systems set up that you want to keep intact. This is also a good option if one partner has credit card debt that the other doesn't want to absorb. Keep in mind that while separate accounts may be yours, you still want to share your financial information with your partner. A third option is to have a joint account for some expenses, joint savings and living expenses, and separate accounts for individual spending money. For instance, you could both agree to put 10% of your income in personal accounts and the remainder in the shared pot. Again, if I make 80% of the money and she makes 20%, or if I make 100% and she makes zero, why would I want to put 20% of my money or 10% of my money in her account? I don't understand. For what reason? Please. Tip three. Things change. Five or ten years into your marriage, your money concerns are likely to be different from those you had when you walked down the aisle. That's why, in addition to monthly money meetings with your spouse to keep abreast of near-term financial issues, you should discuss your big money picture at least once a year. Make sure your retirement plans mesh. If one's 401k is invested solely in high-risk funds, the other partner may want to diversify more. I don't agree. I think you should do your finances like you're going to be divorced, because half of all of us get divorced, and in California, two out of three of us get divorced. Now, I don't think you should be spreading your financial risk with another person who may leave you. Why? For example, if you're the man, why should you have all your money in high-risk funds, and she has it all in safe funds? It doesn't make any sense. Everybody should have a diversified account. For later on, when the marriage doesn't work out, which half of them don't. This is bad advice. Bad, bad, bad. Make sure, too, that you're aware of each other's desires and goals from taking vacations or buying a home to having children. And take time to discuss the what-ifs. What if one partner loses his or her job? Well, then I'll leave you because you're a loser. What if one wants to go back to school? What if someone gets a job in another part of the country? Will the other spouse be willing to pack up and move? Well, she'll say she wants to, and then when she gets there, she'll make your life a living hat. Maybe she'll dial 911. You never know. Try to make your life a living hell. I'm not speaking about any particular people. I'm just saying that that could happen. Tip four, forget gender roles. Oh, please. To think the man is the sole breadwinner is so... Last century, says Money Magazine. <laughs> Most couples who marry are dual career couples, and it's no longer uncommon to find couples where a woman makes more money than her husband. Those women are uniformly fuddly. Uniformly. 
Whatever your situation, don't buy into the notion that money equals power in a marriage, Updike said. Really? He points out that while some men have no trouble with their wives earning more, others resent what they see as a loss of power. Well, again, a guy who's with a woman who makes more money than he does is with a fugly chick for that very reason. I mean, he's certainly not with her because he loves her. Please. On the other hand, if you're the partner with a nice pay package, you might feel you deserve certain privileges. Remember, marriage is a team effort. So keep an open line of communication with your spouse to discuss your expectations and fears. And tip number five, discuss tough topics. There are some topics that nobody likes to talk about but that need to be discussed, especially when children are involved. First and foremost, make sure you have a will. If you don't have a will before your death, state law will determine who gets your property, or worse yet, even raise your children. Updike also recommends a woman have at least one credit card in your name. See, they always prepare the woman for divorce, but never the man. They tell the man, oh yeah, put 20% of your money in here and 10% in her personal account. You give her all the money, and then uh, make sure she has a credit card in case there's a divorce. Which, by the way, she's got your last name, and if she has a credit card, she will end up using the card, and you will end up paying, boys. Money Magazine. Can I tell you something? Any woman who has debts, I wouldn't date her beyond having sex with her, wouldn't have a relationship with her, would not marry her. I'm not paying your student loans. I'm not paying your Visa card. I'm not paying your American Express card. I'm not paying your Master card, your department score cards. I'm not doing it. Any woman with debt, out. And that includes student loans, out. Okay, number one. This is Tom Likas' money advice. Number two, you got to have a prenup. you got to have a prenup as if you're Donald Trump, for God's sake, or Warren Buffett. Because even if you're not today, who knows you won't win the lottery? Who knows you won't cure AIDS? The guy who cures AIDS is going to be a very rich man. Who knows what will happen? Maybe you'll find you have an uncle who uh, will leave you money and you'll inherit millions of dollars. You never know. Don't be a fool. And uh, finally, as far as I'm concerned, no community property. I'm out. Let her get a job and make money, and I have a job, and I'll make money, and... You know what? Whoever, uh, whatever they make, that's what they keep, for God's sake. Do you agree? Tom Like It. 1 800 5 800 Tom. We'll break it down, folks. Tom Like It. 1 800 5 800 866. I'm a fairly new listener. I've been listening for about six months now. I love the show from day one. I've been hooked. I'm like a drug addict. The Tom Like It Show. Tom. 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. Can you marry somebody who doesn't have the same attitude about money you do? I can't. If you've got debts, you can't be with me. That's it. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Vanessa, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Vanessa. How are you? Do you care, dear? I do. I'm doing great. Great. Well, I just wanted to comment on the, uh, let me tell you a bit where I'm coming from. I've been married for about six months. Uh, my husband's a doctor. He has a bunch of student loans. Um, and we were just talking about this on how to make our finances work the best for us. Now, for us right now, I think it's most beneficial to join our accounts, pay off the student loans as fast as we can, and then both jointly invest our money together um, on more, you know, bigger investments that we can contribute to and both have an opinion on it, and then in the long term make more money. Well, you realize he could have done this without you if he's a doctor. <laughs> Absolutely, he could have. Yes. No doubt he makes more money than you do. Uh, now, at the moment, he does, yes. And probably always lot, will. He has a lot more debt than I do, so I'm helping pay his student loans as well at the moment. I understand that, but nonetheless, uh, in the long term, that's bad for him because if you divorce him, you can make a case that you own part of his practice. Uh, for him, that was a foolish thing to do. For you, it's probably a good deal. Well, no, because I, I'm uh, owning a business myself, so he in turn would have half of mine. Uh huh. But what kind of business do you have? How successful is it? Um, it's a film business, and it's moving on up. Uh, we've been around for seventy-six years, and I think we're. Uh, you own a company that's been around for seventy-six years. How old I, are you? Seventy-six. I'm twenty-seven. My father owns it. Oh, okay. So you don't own it, so he doesn't own it. Your husband doesn't own it. Not yet. And my husband doesn't own his practice yet either. Well, who owns it? Um, no one. We're just starting it right now. Uh -huh. So I, in turn, am taking almost a bigger risk than he is at the moment to put all of my... Well, not really, because right now your father owns the business, not you. 
That's correct. So you're, ta you're taking no risk at all. The only risk happens is if your uh, father keels over one day and suddenly you inherit the business. Um, yeah, or I take it over, but my risk would be as well that the practice will fail, and then I'm stuck with all of his student loans. Come on. And... How many doctors' practices fail in Southern California? Please. Oh, you know, I don't know the statistics. I couldn't tell you. I mean, you'd have to be like an incompetent. Well, well not necessarily. So you're telling me that there are people who get degrees as doctors... Uh -huh. uh, they are not disenchanted with the uh, profession. They want to do it. And uh, despite the fact that they're good at what they do and they've got all the credentials, you're telling me they fail. They can fail in business, absolutely, because most of these doctors are trained medically as opposed to in business and how to run a business. Yes, but, uh, of course, uh, if they're smart, they hire financial advisors, accountants, lawyers, what have you, as I have, for example. Ah, I'm losing you. You're losing me. Hello? Oh, there you go. Oh. I'm sorry, what's that again? I said that uh, if a doctor was smart, he would do what I did, which is to hire good lawyers, a great accountant, a uh, financial advisor, uh, rather than trying to do it himself. Right. But at first, you don't have the money to do that, so you'd have to do it yourself to get it started and make sure that you're making money. Well, I, you know what? I think the, the risk is low, and the risk for him is high. Really? Yes. Uh, how would that? I think it would be more risky for me. Because because, because you live in Southern California. Two out of every three marriages ends in divorce. Uh -huh. In most cases I've ever known about, women get much more out of the divorce than men do. Right. Uh, and uh, the man usually earns the bulk of the money and then usually ends up handing over half or more of it to the spouse. Okay, I understand that. but So he's taking a big risk. You right now are making an investment in the future for yourself. And so is he. But he's really not, because let's say your marriage fails in five years and your father is still alive and running his business. Uh -huh. You lose nothing. He loses half of what he has to you. Right, which we have built together, though, with my help. I understand. Because you know I, mean? I can put the money towards his, his student loans right now and put my money into his business. So, in turn, he wouldn't be able to start it without me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know about this. I, most doctors uh, I have known are single when they become doctors. Uh huh. They may have had a girlfriend help them through college, but then uh, when they become doctors, you know, they trade up, of course. Right, of course. Right? But not if they've got something good that's, that's smart and can help them invest as well. Uh, you know, you, you, want, I mean, you want smart in the beginning, and then later when you're uh, rich, you want uh, pretty, hot. Right, but if he if he sits there and takes all of his money and keeps it separately and haul all of his debt separately and invests um, his m amount of money into his business, mm -hmm. he wouldn't have as much as he if he didn't have me with mine. You see what I mean? I think he would. Really? So even interest alone, your account. Okay, if you join your two accounts together, interest alone, you'd be making more money. Dear, would, there isn't uh, a ba banks don't even pay one percent interest on uh, interest is irrelevant. Okay, say investing in stocks. Uh, again, do you uh, have the same investment style? Do you know anything about investing in stocks? If he has all these student loans, where's all this money coming from to invest? You're right. We have no plans of investing right now in stocks. Right. It's so, all in practice. Right. So right now, he, he is the one taking the biggest risk. Absolutely. Yes. He's biggest taking risk. a big risk. If somehow the two, you know, if somehow he uh, had a pretty receptionist one day and you caught him banging her and you left, you could walk away with half of his practice forever and ever. Right, which wouldn't happen because we'd bring the receptionist home. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. That's a whole different story, Vanessa. Well, you know, everybody's got their own lifestyle, I'll tell you that. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. God, talking to you is like talking to Mickey Mantle. This is the best, Tom. The Tom Likas Show. Yes, it is. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's your telephone number. It's Warren on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how are you, man? I'm doing okay, Warren. Hey, dude. Calling up here from Seattle. I uh, I moved from, to uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, lo and behold, just like you said, when people move, they have different uh, ideas on what's going to go on with money and everything else, right. and uh, she left. She came back here to Seattle, moved in back in with her parents, and uh, took the kids and everything, and boy, my life's gotten a heck of a lot better. 
Oh, I bet it has. A lot better. And, you know, they always say this, and uh, I, I find it fascinating. There's a, um, uh, I never see the statistics to back it up, but I've seen this in many reputable magazines. They say that uh, after a divorce, a man's lifestyle improves, and a woman's lifestyle decreases. And um, they say this, of course, because what they're implying is that women get screwed in divorce. That's the implication. But think about it for a second. Most men make more money than the women they are with. So the minute we don't have to spend money on the women we are with, of course our lifestyle improves and their lifestyle decreases. What do you expect? Well, yeah, of course. I agree with that totally. But if you also have a woman that is willing to actually bust her ass, and I haven't found one yet, right? Um, you know, they can actually make as much money. My ex-wife was a hairdresser. She could make hell of a lot more money, and I didn't and never wanted to. Right, well, because I mean, she had you to do that. Oh, exactly. You wanted me to go out and do all that and everything else. Why? Why should right. I bust my ass for someone else who's not willing to give me the things that I need? You are right about that, Warren. All right, Tom. i got to get going. I'm on the freeway stuck. So uh, have a good day. And thanks, oh. for... Thank you. Rebecca on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi there. How are you doing? Hi there. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Basically, my comment is this. I think that what you're saying about women not doing anything with the banks, bank accounts and whatnot are is geographic because in my personal experience, I do the banking, my mother did the banking, my fiancé's mother, sister-in-law, every, you know, the women do the financial work, not the men. The men don't do any uh, of the You banking. know what? The Pacific Northwest is a matriarchal society, somewhat lesbified. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. With chunky chicks with short hair, sensible yeah. outfits... <laughs> Rarely anything sexy. Lots of Eddie no. Bauer and LL Bean. Look, we spend so much time in Seattle and Portland. We know <laughs> that could be true. For we some, know, but not in my, not with the people that I'm associated with. We're yeah. not a bunch of dykes. <laughs> All right, but you're uh, chunky chicks with short hair. Come on, come no, on, on, on. No, come on. All no. the hot chicks leave and they come to warmer climes like Los Angeles. <laughs> No, like the chicks that go down there are the ones who want to like make it in the modeling industry. Right. No, nothing between. Perfect her, yeah. for my students to prey upon. Of course, yes, I'm a director. <laughs> Why don't you come back to my place and show me your reel? <laughs> exactly. So, they, Joey, I'll tell you what, dear. Come home and show me your reel, and I'll show you my rod. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's more fishing than movie making. But anyhow, but well, I, anyways, I don't think it's point. fishing at all. But go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> My point being that, you know, and I do make more than my fiancé, and I'm not unattractive at all. So I just, I think that maybe it's a geographic thing. Uh, no, dear. But, the last caller who uh, said he was having this problem was calling from Seattle himself. Right. But he wasn't saying that the woman that he was with didn't, well, anyways, he was different. I, I, but in my, in my experience... The women do a lot more than the men do in the realm of finances. The women do more than men do? Yeah. Well, maybe, I dear, so. I tend to believe that people tend to know people who are like themselves. So True. it's possible that you and your 12 friends all do the same thing. <laughs> by and large, the statistics prove it. Men make more money than the women they are with. And no matter how much money a woman makes, they tend to be with men who make even more than they make. We, women do not like being with men who make uh, less money than they do. And the women who are with men who make less money than they do are fugly. Okay, well, in my personal experience, that is not the case. And I make more, and I am not. You make more than your husband? Fiancé, yes. Your fiancé. You make more than he does. I do. You do. And uh, you are a 10? I would say probably an eight, not a ten. I'm not. I'm five two and like one fifteen, so I'm not, you know, supermodel. I'm not tall enough. Are you, I know you're a Seattle eight or an LA eight. Oh, I I don't know. Probably Seattle. That's my base. I know you could be an LA ten and be in Seattle. Okay. Well, I would say I would say Seattle just because I don't want to. So, Seattle eight's about an LA six or six and a half. <laughs> I'm basing that more so on height than anything else. Oh, so in other words, you look like a short supermodel. I would say a nine, but yes, I'm short. I'm five two. I'm not that tall. Uh huh. But, uh, but you, no. you like you like uh, El McPherson in a dwarf's outfit. No, I'm not blonde. I'm a Asian Caucasian mix. 
Oh, you're an Asian Caucasian mix. Yeah. Oh, Anyhow, though, I'm not ugly. You're not ugly. Is my point. I see. And I do make more, and we met in school, and so based on what happened afterwards, yeah, I'm making more than he is, and I probably will uh-huh. continue making more than he is. Uh-huh. We're not breaking up, and I'm not unattractive. So you have low self-esteem. No, absolutely not. Why would you want to be with a man who makes less than you do? Because I love him. Because I love him. <laughs> he makes me laugh. He's a great person. Something and else so... going on there. There's something else going on there. Oh, no, there's not. Something else. Absolutely not. No. All right. Okay. Anyway, so that was my point. I'm right. going to get going, but All right. thanks for taking my call. Uh, well, I did it as a public service, dear. <laughs> Tom, 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 like it. Tom, like it. Like it. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Stand on the Tom, like it show. Hello. Hello, Dad. <laughs> Hello, Ed. I'm the, I'm the father you never had. Damn right. The Tom, like it show. Tom, like it show. 1-800-5800-TOM. He's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. It's Kristen on the Tom, like it show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Do you care, Kristen? Long time listener, first time caller. Long time listener, first time caller. Hi. Hey, I'm a physician in Seattle, and I don't think anyone, man or woman, should let somebody else pay for their student loans. That person then can lay claim to your future earnings. Too dangerous. Oh, well, you should have completely separate uh, accounts uh, in a case like that. I agree completely. Actually, you know, this was actually drilled into me by my parents. My parents said when I went through medical school, if I wanted to get married, that would be great, but they wanted to pay for everything. So if anything ever happened, she could never take any of my money. Yeah. Well, uh, my attitude is um, I would never, you know, I've been married, as you know, uh, and divorced four times, never marry anybody with student loans, car loans, and credit card debt, ever. You're right. Ever. You're right. Ever. You know what? If you want to be with me, you have to have a clean slate. I agree. And if completely. you don't, I'm out. I, I you know what? I, you know, marriage is a business. Sorry, folks, it's a business, and I don't want to pay your debts. And I I've always either. said, I meet, I meet all these chicks who have twenty five thousand dollar American Express bills, and they spent the money going with the girls to Cabo for a week, and they spent the money on clothes to look good for the last three boyfriends, and they spent it on. Uh, uh, various weekends away and uh, uh, accessories and uh, whatever. And uh, you know what? I don't want to pay for the fun you've been having the last five years. I don't. I agree. Anyway, I just wanted to put my two cents in. Love your show. Thank you, Kristen. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Jack on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jack. Man, i got to tell you, you're the last saving grace for our young men of America today. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> Excellent show. Definitely long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank I you. heard your show for the first time five years ago, and I thought, you know, this guy's very jaded. He's had a lot of bad experiences with women. But the more I listen and the more I go through life on my own, the more I really am forced to agree with you. Let me tell you my experience on this topic. When I was a young man of 20... I fell in love at a very young age, and I wanted to be the knight in shining armor, rescue all my girlfriends, pay for everything, be very chivalrous. And then they leave you, and when they leave you, you're left with nothing. You've ended up spending all your money taking care of them. Right. I am now 40 years old, been divorced, and the best thing that I did during my marriage is to keep our funds separate. Because when I divorced, I walked away, everything was smooth. No problem, no backlash. This is not rocket science. There's nothing wrong with keeping separate accounts. Absolutely not, especially since the odds are that one out of every two marriages ends in divorce. How many times do people have to hear that statistic? Yeah, Well, it's, it's pretty sad, though, when you look at how ridiculously stupid guys are these days. And I would say to guys that are listening to your show, that what you're saying is relatively true. I mean, guys should get out there. They should have fun. They should have as much sex with as many different women as they can. They should protect their assets. I'm 40 years old. You know how I make my living? 
How? I make my living photographing people for lawyers that are cheating on their spouses. Oh, I'll bet that's uh, really uh, uplifting work. Unbelievable. Jack, thanks a lot for the call. I appreciate it. The Tom Likas Show.